We define high performing organizations that those in the top quartile of revenue growth, market share, profitability, and customer satisfaction. I want to know what in human capital practices correlates to this. So the high performing organizations in the top quartile doing different things than low performing. Uh, we do a lot of regression analysis, uh, we do some R squared analysis, so much of market performance which is explained by certain human capital practices. So if I say high performing organizations, you know what I mean. But the future is here. Exponential technological change. I'm not a, uh, a programmer. I'm a researcher. I love the human behavior and organizations and how they behave. And the technology is here. Uh, if you read Friedman's book, uh, Thank You for Being Late, about the acceleration of change, it's a great read if you want to read about the acceleration of change, especially what technology has done just in the last 10 years. It'll just, it'll just blows your mind what we're going to do in the next 10 years. So it's here. Uh, and technology today is a toy. You can see it in your kids, you can see it in your grandkids, they just grow up with it. This is why. And by the way, here's a tour towards our social interactions. Here's dinner with friends, at the movie, <laughs> at the game, lunch with friends, and the big day. <laughs> so it is there, it's part of our social framework. If you don't have technology today in your workplace, you're a dinosaur. They expect it, except it. So when you look at uh, some predictions, I don't know why we need a robot dog, but if you're rich enough, you buy a robot dog. So worldwide spending is going to double by 2020. Uh, development of automation technologies and artificial intelligence uh, could see 75 million jobs displaced. That's a low figure, by the way. Some say 30 million, some say 75 million, but there's a lot higher. Uh, that jobs are displaced. Really, anything that is consistent or predictable can be replaced. Okay? Even a manager's job. If you think of what uh, Drucker said about managers doing things right, leaders doing the right thing, doing things right is consistency, is predictability. You can actually automate a manager's job in the future. So think about what can be done. If your job is consistent, predictable, better upskill yourself. Because that, because technology is not that. However, 133 million new jobs may be started because of AI, robotics, or machine learning. So that means there's 50 million net new jobs. What's the problem with that? There's a huge gap between those people who are losing those jobs and those people who are making those jobs. And today we're seeing that already. If you're looking for any kind of technology that is talent out there, it is extremely, extremely difficult to get good talent. Uh, a lot of companies are saying, I'll hire you, or then I'll write the job description afterwards, because you're good. We'll write a job description. So it translates, 50% uh, of AI will outperform humans in all tasks in 45 years. In fact, Steve Hawking said, it's going to eliminate humanity. Because it will replace everything we do. Make sure she doesn't have a futurist. So there's one thing I know. That the future is never predict the future at all. <laughs> <laughs> they're almost always wrong. Because there's counter trends. You can see the trend, that's easy. But where are the counter trends? Because there's always going to be counter trends that make us go because the future is never a linear projection of what you're seeing today because of counter trends. If the future was a linear projection, we would be paperless today. We're all writing notes still. We should be able to see. We should be working three hours a week as technology must free us up, etc. Technology has made us 24-7. So these counter trends are always there. <laughs> oh, but, uh, I, I fear that day technology will surpass human interaction and the world become a generation of idiots. <laughs> and, and old people love to talk about young people being a generation of idiots. It's not, it's not true. Yes, it's not true. The problem is here is technology, but what is it going to do for humans as we go forward? And I think the counter trend is this. The more high tech we become, the more high touch we will be. And our, we just did three research uh, projects with young people. And by young people, I hate generation research. So I'm not going to say generations, but if you're into that stuff, it's the latter half of the millennials and the Gen Z. We're looking at young people and what they want in the workplace. Because if you want talent today, you better look at what they're going to want. Okay? And I don't do generation stuff. So it's just young people, talent, looking for jobs. The thing we saw is they want more control and flexibility than ever, what they do, how they do it, where they go. They want more regarding experiences and control over what's being taught, 
when it's being taught, and the pace in which it's going to be taught. And more face to face communication than before. This study, we did four large studies. Uh, the study, the first one I said, about face to face communication. So we did four studies. They wanted to longitudinal stuff with focus groups. And so we said, well, for the second study, we did the same question. We asked, is Skype the same thing as face to face? They said, no. We allowed face to face communication. And we asked them, why in the focus group? And they said, they don't trust you. Communications that they don't see the face to face. It's a big trust gap. And they don't trust technology, period. Because they know technology and the biases and everything as we just heard from, but also the different things that happen with fake and stuff within that on the web. So they don't trust a lot of stuff that's happening. So they don't want more face to face communication. Talent acquisition be more personalized. The new challenge would be getting them in the door and then sitting them down and writing a job description. It's going to be more personalized, too, because technology allows me to mass customize the market of one, and they'll expect you to market to me. Not to a general job group, not to a general job description, but I want to be personally uh, recruited. And it's called talent branding. And you can that mark, brand your talent to the market of one, and that's what's going to technology to provide, and they expect it. Because they expect it today. They individualize everything in order. They go to stores and they order things. They go to Amazon and they can individualize. They individualize their sneakers. Whatever they want, they can individualize it. They're going to want to individualize their, the way they're recruited. Individualized development plan become even more important. Managers will need to sit down with the direct reports and have serious discussions about career development. And this is another counter trend out there. So remember all those jobs that are going to be displaced? All those people that don't have the skills? Why don't you start today? thinking about the jobs that are going to be displaced and the people are going to be displaced, and start upskilling them today. Not waiting till the last minute to upskill them. Start today, starting investing in the future. Uh, there's a big need, and we've done a lot of studies with the Aspen Institute, on this whole upskill America. Uh, you can go to the Aspen Abs uh, yeah, uh, Abs Institute and find a lot of good materials on just how do you, how do, you do upskilling of those workers that are going to be displaced. <coughs> And the factor of the future is probably only going to have two employees. It's going to be a man and a dog. The man will be there to feed the dog, and the dog will be there to make sure the man doesn't touch anyone. <laughs> you just, there's a canning factory in Amsterdam, but they don't even turn on the lights. It runs 24 7. There's no employees. It just continually operates. That's how things, if it's consistent or predictable, we can use machine learning, AI, robotics, super pricing. It doesn't mean it's going to replace human beings. So we're going to have a surplus of job openings that's just going to require different skills. As I just talked about, how can we upgrade our intellectual capability to really understand how we become more than human? And that's that high touch kind of stuff. Traditional coaching, mentoring, feedback, and the culture of development have become more important. They want more of this than ever before. Coaching. We were just, I was just talking to one of our members. We are a membership organization. Just about this whole issue of the gig workers. And how do you provide training to gig workers when you have, uh, when you have the full employment problem of how much training you give on the full time employee and you've got to offer benefits? One of the things they want is coaches. One of the things employees want is coaches. They want that development experience. You want to, you talk about, you know, Richard, we talked about people wanting to jump and job and job and job and job to get those experiences. What we saw with the young people today, they will stay with you for 20 years. But you better give them all those different experiences. Staying in one job for 20 years, no, they won't do it. They'll stay with one company, believe me. You're paying them right, you've got good benefits, and you give them all the experiences they want, they'll stay with you forever. If they want those development experiences. They want a manager who's a developer of talent. They don't want to put HR to be a developer. They want the manager to be a developer of talent. It's that face-to-face, -face, it's that contact with her, a person they like. And how do you do that with a big company? When everything's a project work, and they're all over the world, and you never, never see the people who work on your project, because we're going to become a project economy. You'll become a project workplace, and that's where it's going to. How do you lead people like that? 18% of learning professionals said, well, by 2020, by the way, we do all the research here from ATD. 
Okay, ASTD is for how they can. We do a lot of their research too. So one of the projects we did was around this future of uh, learning. And eight, only 18% of learning professionals said they will see learning in classrooms in the future in 2020. Unfortunately, most employees still prefer, especially young people, and it's still the most common part, part of learning. Why? It's because that human interaction about learning, about learning from others, building relationships, is becoming more and more important, more and more part of being human in the high-tech world. So how can you build into this? So one of the things you think about in the future is how can you build into that? How can I go to be turned off by political, that straightforward, constructive, face-to-face -face communication, they say, is the most important thing. And it's face-to-face -face communication because they don't trust you. They trust CEOs. They don't trust institutions. They want feedback on their job weekly, face-to-face, -face, and no more than five minutes at a time. So don't waste my hour of my time, by the way. But I want a lot of feedback. But don't waste a lot of time. <laughs> so give it to me a lot. So certain straight, straightforward. So the bottom line here is that technology is here. It's a trend. We know it's a trend. AI, machine learning, robotics. Um, you work with a lot of Microsoft. So very familiar with a lot of stuff. It blows your mind. We have a natural learning platform that we develop. It just blows your mind of what it really can recover with the social strength. So we have a high-tech world. What you can do today is to start preparing people for the high-tech world today. HR has that opportunity. So you start preparing them for the high-tech high touch. Start preparing them for upskilling their, their skills to get to that next level, the next job. We can do a lot today. We don't have to sit back and be reactive. We can be proactive. We know it's coming. We heard some of the things that are happening. Let's be proactive about it ourselves. And that's it.